Hello everyone, welcome back to the lecture series of the special senses. Today our topic will be on color vision. In the previous topic we were discussing more about the rhodopsin properties. Now we are going to discuss about the cone and how it is helping in the color vision. So let's dive into the topic. So this will be the topic of color vision and color blindness. Like what are the types of color blindness that also will be discussed. So coming to the color vision, all of us know that the color vision it helps to perceive the color, I don't have to tell you, but it is done with the help of cones. And this, like rods, rods, all the type of rods are single type, but in cones, generally they say that it is generally divided into three types of cone. And these three types of cones are responsible for different spectrum of the light. So in a spectrum of the light, we know that VibGR colors are there and there are some primary colors and out of the mixture of this primary colors, the other colors are going to be formed. In a similar manner, the cones are present, which are of three types, which is going to give us the primary colors. And based on the variations and stimulations of these three types of cones, the person is going to perceive the color. And uh, human eye has such a tremendous amount of uh, color perception, and we are able to perceive a lot of colors. So coming to the color vision, that is a property of cones. So let's try to understand what are the different types of cones. There are various classifications based on their wavelengths that is given. The first one is, they are called as ES cones. ES as it stands for shorter wavelength. Shorter wavelength. As you can see here, it is indicated by the color blue. Then coming to the EM cones, EM cones is for medium wavelength curves. Medium wavelength. And as you can see here, it is for the green spectrum of the light. Then coming to the last one, that is the L, that is for longer wavelength curves. And it is going to perceive the red color. And the rods fall somewhere in between the AS and the M cones. So this is the three different types of cones which is present in the retina. So coming to the visual spectral properties, as you can see here, this is the entire spectrum which is given along the x-axis with the wavelength which is given in nanometers. Along the y-axis, they have given percentage of maximum of the light absorption. Like suppose that particular cone is stimulated, how much is the maximum percentage of the uh, particular cone is stimulated. For example, if a li uh, green light is thrown, they will check at, at what particular wavelength this is being perceived maximally by the green cones that is the S cones, shorter wavelength cones. As you can see here we have the blue cones, green cones and red cones. Blue is for shorter wavelength, green is for medium wavelength and red is for the larger long wavelength. And here we can see that it is given in the order of VibGR. VibGR is the order we all know that and when you try to reverse it down that is a red, green and blue. Nowadays, most of the lights that has been sold in the market for colored lights, they are also called as RGB lights. Why they are called like that? Because these are considered as the primary colors. These are considered as the primary colors. And we have separate cones for the red color vision, the green color and the blue color. A mixture of this is going to perceive as a different color. And rods, as usual, it is going to fall between the red and sorry, green and the blue zone. And red color, the maximum height of response will be at 565 nanometer. And the green curve, it is going to respond maximally for the wavelength of 535 nanometer. So the blue is, it is going to respond for the wavelength of 440 nanometer. So this is the spectral wavelength of their maximal response. The red, green and blue, they are going to respond at these spectral lines. Now coming to some of the theories of color vision. Here now already we understood one thing, how the color vision is formed. First thing is, there are three different types of cones. This theory was given by a scientist called as Young Helmholtz. So that is why this term, this term is called as Young Helmholtz theory. This is nothing but the trichromatic color theory. Trichromatic color theory. Why it is called trichromatic? Because it is going to have three different types of cones and all of them are going to respond to different different uh, colors. So that is why this the theory is called as color trichromatic uh, visual theory or a Helmholtz theory. 
Now coming to the next theory that is the opponent process theory. Opponent means opposite. So let's try to understand what is this opposite. It was given by Edward Herring and what he said that if a particular group of cones are responding for one color, it will be inhibited by the opponent color. For example, classical black and white. Some group of cones which are responding for black at the same time this group will be inhibited by the white light. So this is what the series is. If a particular response is given for one color, the exact opposite end of the spectrum, it is going to inhibit it. So he also proposed these type of combinations for the opponent process theory, three different opponent process theory. That is the yellow and blue. That is also another group of opposing ends. So for example, whenever something is stimulated by an yellow color, what is going to happen? When blue color is formed, this yellow group of cones will be inhibited. Which is the preferred theory? Of course, the trichromatic theory is considered a more a preferred theory. But still, the opponent process is not wrong. He has also justified with the experiments. So both the theories are validated for the color vision of the present day. So when a person is coming to you in your uh, MBBS practicals also, you must have tested for the visual. And out of that, we will be checking the color vision also. So classically, what do we use for the testing of color vision? We use these type of charts. All of us must have used these charts. And what is this charts group? It is called as Ishihara chart. Okay. So it is going to have different plates with different numbers in it. Some of the numbers will not be seen by the normal people. It will be seen by a color brain. And some of the plates that can be read by a normal person cannot be read by a color brain person. So this is one of the classical charts that is being used. Why color vision is very, very important, especially people uh, who are in the navigation industry, for example, pilot and other people, they should have a good perception of the color. And even the train drivers, they should have a good perception of color because when red signal is there, they have to stop for it, not rush through it. So these people need to be color sensitive. And even in the medical professional, the persons with color blind, especially if they are having a red green deficiency, then becoming a surgeon because of the red color perception is not well in them or becoming a pathologist where they have to see the various different shades of pinks and blues, that will be difficult. So these professional people has to undergo these tests and they should not have any type of color blindness. So Ishiara's chart is one thing and there are some other old instruments which are used on as called as Holgram Wool Matching Test. So this is going to match the color of wool. Suppose that wool is given, he has to match across the palette to which color it belongs. And there is a lamp also which is used for the color vision that is called as Edridge Green Lantern Test. This also we can ch change the color, hue, intensity, everything can be changed in this uh, Edridge Green Lantern and the person, uh, person will be asked to perceive what color it is and depending upon that, the scoring will be done. Here also, there are different types of charts and we can identify what type of defect it is and we can differentiate whether it is a mild, moderate or a severe type of color blindness with the help of Ishiara stars. So see, these are some of the other tests for the testing the color vision. And now coming to the color blindness. And all of you uh, will definitely have experienced that this. Women usually they have a better color perception than the men. And that is actually has a genetical perspective also. I feel most of the times that most of the men are color blind. Like they will not be able to appreciate different shades of it. Don't think they are color blind, but their perception is a little lower side. Why that is because the color blindness is mostly linked to an X chromosome. And men have only one X chromosome. That is why if that one X chromosome is having a deficiency of this uh, genetic material, then color blindness can happen. So color blindness usually they are called as anomalies and very rarely complete color blindness is there. So anomaly means it indicates the deficiency, not complete color blindness. It is going to indicate the deficiency. So what is a loss of L cones? Whenever red color perception is gone, what is this called as? It is called as protonopias, proton anomaly. When M cones are gone, that is the green color is gone. What they are referred as? The green colored ones are referred as deuteran anomaly. 
and the blue cones loss is called as triton anomaly if there is a complete loss of that particular color then it is also called as protonopia deuteronopia and tritonopia this protonopia and deuteronopia it is common in males why because it is linked to the x chromosome then what is the so specialty about this blue color is this blue color is located on the chromosome 7 so can it happen in female yes it can happen in females also this has no sexual differentiation both males and females can have this triton anomaly and we should know about uh, another different terms that is called as trichromats dichromats and monochromats Tychromats means they have all three different cone cells that is the uh, red cones green cones and blue cones all of them are present so it when it, for a normal person we can call them as trichromats if somebody is lacking one cone and he has two cone system then they are called as dry, dichromat, dichromats and if somebody has having only one cone system then they are called as monochromats so these are the anomalies and uh, here we will, I will also mention the rod locations. Rods are located in the chromosome number 3. Uh, whereas the blue color is present in chromosome number 7. That is why Tridenopia has no sexual preponderance. Males and females, both of them can get it. So this is the trichromats, dichromats and monochromats. They are different type of cone system. If everything is present, they are called as trichromats. I hope it's clear. Thank you for watching the video. If you have any doubts, kindly drop it in the comment section. I'll be happy to assist you. Thank you so much.